it ain't the coolest dad ever. Really? How's it going? Nice. It's going good. What y'all doing? Eating some nachos. Want some? Nah, I've been trying yeah. to lose weight. You look, you look really good. Do I? Yeah. Those new glasses too? Oh yeah. Your glasses look really cool. All right. How much you need? What are you talking about? What you needing? There's this girl at school. Oh, here we go. And I really want to get her something that's like really nice to. So you want to get her a gift via my wallet? Yes. Oh, well, you can ask. Can I have some money? No. As a father of six, I already know the tricks my kids use to get something out of me. I'll tell you what I am going to give you, though. Some advice. OK. But if there's something I know better, it's women. So when it comes to wooing that special someone, I'm all about dishing out pearls of wisdom. Do not go spend a lot of money on a gift. Just not actual pearls, because that would be way too expensive. You set the bar. No. What? How do this is my advice. However, that doesn't mean pearls have to be off limits. The key is creativity. You need to use your brain and think of something sweet, free. Maybe give her some pearly shells you've collected. Or how about a Pearl Jam album? And it never hurts to just flash those pearly whites. It's not really about the money. I think the more romantic gifts are the best. And I'm the master at free, sweet, romantic gifts. Well. You were the master. What are you talking about? I do stuff. I still do those gifts. When was the last time you did that? The other, the other yeah. day at lunch, I was like, do you want some tea? You could actually show Will what to do for the girl, but that's weird. I no, mean, you could just do it for someone you love. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something for you really nice. Aw, that's so sweet. And I'm going to spend no money. Just pure romance. What would you, like, you, Give him examples of what you'd well, want to I do, mean, like, and be specific. It should just be a total surprise. I mean, I don't want to tell you. If I tell you, then, right. you know, it's not a surprise. So. Exactly. Well, you have to come up with it on your Out own. Of They're not going to the say exactly what they heart. want. Out of the Although, passion. in some cases, it's easier if you just say exactly what it was. Sometimes that's cool, too. Yeah. I know, like, but that kind of ruins you know? the surprise if they, like, right. tell you things to do. I mean, you have to just, More like. More of a surprise. Yeah, like it just needs to be. Total surprise. You know, total. Total surprise. All right. I'm going to plan something really cool, and hopefully, it'll inspire you to think outside of the wall. That's awesome. Cool. Now, in theory, could I hire someone? Is that? That would be spending money, so no. Can you believe Reed and Brighton's wedding is about to be here? Yeah. Do you know that by the time they get married, they will have been dating five years? This is true. This is true. If it wasn't for me, we might not be having a wedding. Babe. I might do this for a living or something. I think you're confused with, oh, I introduced them. Yes, I did. I got them together. Babe, I made some moves. I did. You can't take credit for an introduction. Oh, it was a little more than introduction. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm the think... ultimate matchmaker, but I do have a special set of skills. Oh, hey, hey. Mountain Man. Hey. Oh, man. Hey. What are you doing up here? Oh, I thought I'd get me a bite to eat. You by yourself? Oh, yeah. Just me, myself, and I. Well, yeah. it's a crowd right there. Yeah, that reminds me of being by myself in the woods one time. Really? It's getting dark, and I was deer hunting. This big old buck come charging through the woods. He kept getting closer and closer and closer and closer, and then he took off running after me. All right, man. Good to see you. Then he really started coming. Did he... you already order your food yet? And I was walking. And I got to hearing something behind me. The faster I went, which wasn't too fast, yeah. the faster he got, I kept looking for him, kept looking for him. I wonder what's taking your face so long. Kept looking for him. And all I had was my crossbow. Yeah, tell me. Then I oh, there's see. your food. Your food. They just called you. 
Oh, that's you. me. We'll finish the story yeah. later. Yeah, I was just getting to the good part. Oh, no. Yeah. All right. Y'all take later, care. Bye now. All right. Gosh. You know what the problem is? is he's by himself. I know. If you're the ultimate matchmaker, you need to fix Mountain Man up with somebody. Good luck with that. That's a good idea. <laughs> Babe, I was kidding. I think I could do that. No, you couldn't. I, I know I can. I could do it. I'll tell you what. We need to come up with some kind of wager. Yeah, okay, how about this? If I find somebody from Mountain Man, you have to rub my shoulders in public, like in front of your Man, whole family. Every time I see a guy doing that, I'm like, I know. So, but you don't have anything to worry about. If you don't have any confidence in me to do this, you have nothing to worry about. All right, deal. You All got right, a bet. Deal. I can do it. No. I've not gotten one bite this entire time. Who do you think went in a fight, me or a fish? You or a fish? Yeah. I mean, like in the water on his turn. On land, I got him because he'd be choking. A but. shark? You talking about a great white, or what you talking about? A fish. You ain't gonna beat up a shark. I can promise you that. Nah, sharks eat people. You could beat a turtle, maybe. A turtle ain't a fish, though. My money's on the fish, Martin. No offense. None taken. I think this is one of the dumbest conversations I've ever heard y'all talk about. Maybe a trout. What's wrong with you? No, nah, I'm in a little predicament. But I said I would do something for Corey that's like thought out, but I can't spend any money. How'd you get into this spot? Well, I was trying to teach a lesson to Will. He's trying to impress a girl, and I said, do something, don't spend money, and now I gotta do something and not spend any money. Why didn't you just give the boy $10? You, you wouldn't even have well, to Well, looking do back, it. that would have been the better plan, but I was trying to teach him a life lesson. Take her fishing. Well, it's supposed to be romantic or nice. What's more romantic than fishing? Well, Naked fishing? Uh-oh. I thought I was talking to a group of Mary Casanovas, but it turns out these guys are a bunch of Mary Casanonos. Get her some flowers and some chocolate. I can't spend any money. Go cut Jeff's flowers. He got plenty. Don't do that. It's much easier to feel confident in your romantic abilities when you're married and don't have to use any of those romantic abilities. Just go shopping with her while she shops. Just be there. Yeah, there you go. Let her spend money and you just watch it. Yeah. I do that all the time. The heart is a muscle, and it turns out when you don't use it, it atrophies, big time. All right, boys, let me, let me help you all out here. Look, if you want to impress a woman, look, there's nothing sweeps a woman off her feet like a drive-in movie. How can it sweep her off her feet if she's sitting down? God, it's just so powerful. That's actually not a bad idea. Ain't that place been closed down for like 30 years? Yeah, but I mean, the, the structure's still there. If you got a screen that's free, I got to figure out a way to use it. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. I used to go to have that thing all the time. You pull up there and you pick up, put oh, yeah. your blanket down in the back end, get you some popcorn. It's kind of romantic. It is romantic. Well, I'm glad y'all finally recognized my genius. Yeah, we could go, like, restore it, fix it all up. We? I need free labor help. Oh. Oh, boy. It's got to be free. I say we go look at it and see what it looks like. All right, I'm gonna go call that guy, see if I can get the drive-in movie theater. I ain't got a bite all day anyway. Well, you should have held on. Oh, look at here. Look at here. <laughs> you got one? Oh, no. Yeah, I got a good one. <laughs> hey, technically, that's my fish. You could probably beat a trout. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. What'd you get? Oh, I got something, all right. What you got? Guess what? What? I found Mountain Man's woman. I ran into Donna at the grocery store. Donna. She loves the outdoors, and she's single. She's basically mountain woman. Hey, that's not going to work. Yes, it is. She's like him. She's... If she's like Mountain Man, it's not going to work. Yes, it is. Opposites attract. No. Yes. Good hey. grief, no. They'll never finish a conversation. Since Mountain Man has unique qualities. He needs the opposite to offset that. Babe. I'm questioning your matchmaking skills. Mountain man needs a valley girl. I found the perfect woman. It'll never work. High energy, high octane, and then you have something. 
Since we have a bet, you got your woman. Let me get a woman for Mountain Man. If he picks the girl that I get, then you have to, let's say, uh, how about wash my truck? I'm cool with that. I'm not gonna oh, be doing boy. it. I mean, I, I've already got this one. <laughs> I do. Well, we'll see. I do. You're not gonna be able to find a woman. Where are you gonna go? Hey, never underestimate old Jace. We got a project on our hands here. Definitely a fixer-upper. Yikes. There's not even a door up on there. The door? What about that thing? You ain't even gonna be able to see a movie. You just need a little piece of screen. Huh? Maybe we could just cut the trees at an angle like that, maybe? That's a lot of whacking. How long do you think it'd take us to cut that stuff down? A month. Yeah. I got two days. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. All right, well, let me check out the inside. Maybe there's something we can use that's kind of romantic. What are you talking about? That place is a house of horrors. OK, in theory, this would have been a great place for a romantic date. Big, large space, huge screen to project the movie. Hey, going in, boys. Oh, well, <laughs> why, why, why? <laughs> a giant wasp nest merely beat away. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Yeah, there's Waltz in there, dude. Is it my hair? No. 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 Good thing this ain't the movie My Girl, or this day would be ending very differently. This ain't gonna work. We can't go in this area. I know. Lost so maybe we get back, just focus on out there, put some Porter Johns or something. No, nah, I can't buy a Porter. I can't That's buy Hey, you can't do that. That costs money. And you want to talk about not romantic. There is not nothing romantic about a Porter John. A warm seat is crazy? nasty. Hey, Have you never made away. out in a Porter John? What? Hey, 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 no. hey. He's raising his hand. Let's bail it at the farm. You do have it, ranch. What about the ranch? Bail one out there? Bill what? I drive in. You got plenty of room. And it does have bathroom and electricity. No walls. That would walk. That's smart. I got a projector. I can bring it. Really? That's yeah. half the battle right there. It's all coming together, boys. Well, if we're helping you, we get to come. Yeah, I'm coming. Hey, over. it's a night out for everybody. OK, you can come, but I need, like, at least 30 minutes of just romantic time with I'll my wife. I'll give you 28 with Corey. So, si. What? I guess that's all we can do. This place is a disaster. All right, y'all ready? <laughs> Let's get out of here. Movie time! Uh. Seriously, y'all never made out in a porter, John? Gross. <laughs> So tell me what you like to do. Got a farm, so mm -hmm. I usually stay out there and taking care of all those animals. Ew. Guess who I found? Oh, Mountain there Man. He is. Hey. Hey. Man of the hour. Right, Hi, there. This is my friend Donna. Okay. Nice to meet you, Donna. This is Kimmy. Hey, Mountain Man. Kimmy, hey, Kimmy. She can make the sun shine on a rainy day. Yeah. <laughs> Today, Mountain Man is the luckiest man in the world. He has not one, but two choices, personally chosen by us. That's right. I am 100% confident that my pick will win. She actually runs a boutique. You know anything about boutiques, Mountain Man? What's a boutique? That's what? Not. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I was getting you a little something here. What? And I met the owner, she talks pretty fast. I thought, this is her. But, oh, these flies. Mm. I think it's something about the reflection, isn't it? Yeah, see, she knows a lot about the outdoors, see mm. that? I do love the outdoors. I know. Yeah. That's I true. don't. I'm gonna give you credit. The fact that you found a woman similar to Mountain Man is incredible. It is, isn't it? I know. The problem is, this will never work. Never work. We'll see. Well, I love getting sun. Yeah. See? All I know is I can't wait for those hands to be massaging my back, making me feel all good inside. These hands will be pointing at spots on my truck <laughs> that you missed. <laughs> yes. 
Hey, old Jace, what you got smoking on that grill down Come there? Come on down here, mountain man, and check it out. You got my stomach roaring. Oh, yeah. What you think about Kimmy? Oh, she seems real nice. Nice? Mm. She is. Donna, she seems nice, too. Yeah. But look, Willie is making a homemade drive-in movie theater. We're all going to get together, watch a movie under the stars like old times. You're invited. I'm invited? Yeah, and you need to bring Kimmy. I'll never finish telling you the story about that deer that like got me, that big buck. And yeah, I... you told me that story. I never told you how it ended. All right, let's go talk to Kimmy. Hey, I'm going to What? That's where we're going to put it? Well, that's what I was thinking, somewhere in the yard. We're going to have to build a wall. I know a guy, but I don't want a permanent wall. Well, just leave it up, dummy. Why do I have to think of everything? What am I going to do with a big wall? Play racquetball on it. I don't play racquetball, so I don't. And you should, because you need to exercise. Why don't we just hang a sheet from the barn? It'd be easy. No, that would work. That would work. That would work, that yeah. Would. Why do I have to think of everything? You didn't think enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're actually getting somewhere with this free romantic date thing that I have to plan for Corey. Yeah, I think this will work. Yeah. Yeah. Hang it right off that eve. You got a king size bed, right, Willie? It's gonna take more sheets than that. Yeah. Let's look in the barn. If we can actually get this screen up, I'll kill two birds with one stone. My boat cover. I think that'll work, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Now we're being rednecks here. I'll get to sweep my wife off her feet and show little Will that his dad is a true Thrifty, romantic. Hey, and you even hang them lights up before the I, movie starts. That's a good idea. Why do I have to think of everything? If only I could get rid of Cy, this night would be perfect. I give you Willis Drive-In. Perfect. Mm. Ready and open for business. For free? We did it, for I, free. You ain't got my bill yet, clown. No, I ain't paying you, I pay you <laughs> at hey. work. What do you mean? You're hey. supposed to be at work right this, now. No, this is extra. You better go get ready for your date. We'll yep. hang up the lights while you go. Yep. I smell oh, pretty bad. Up. All right, appreciate you guys. Up. That way, it. Put on some cologne. Yeah, put on some deodorant. We're going to hit you for overtime. Brush your huh? hair. Yeah. Oh. yeah, put some lipstick on, too. <laughs> lipstick on a pig. <laughs> OK. Almost there. I can't even imagine what you've done. I don't even have any idea. I think you might need to wash this blindfold, though. Why? It smells a little sweaty. I only have one clean. Now? And now, blindfold off. OK. Oh, my hey, goodness. There's a little. A drive-in movie? Drive-in movie. Mm. How about you that? You are still as romantic as you were when we first met. You like it? I love it. No money. All of it was used. That's the tarp I had on the boat. Oh. So I figured we would, uh, Turn the truck around and watch off the tailgate. I love it. I think Willie did great on his surprise free date. He totally exceeded my expectations. Thank you. All of this just for me? Well, and some other people. I had to cash in a lot of favors, so I invited Wait, a few other Wait, what? I invited a few other folks. <laughs> You're so cute when you do sweet things for me. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, hey. What's up? Hey, this is awesome. Pretty cool, huh? Is that Jay? That's, That's Galwin. They're still streaming in. Oh, Lordy. Well, the movie ain't started yet. Waiting on well, you, Well, waiting on everybody well, to get there. There you go, boy. Get everybody here. You show little Will how it's done. Hey, Perfect. I'm happy to teach him all my secrets. I mean, the ones that are age appropriate. <laughs> oh, man. What? It's Mountain Man, and he, he has a girl, and I can't tell who it Wait, is. Wait, what? All right, let's check it. What? what? Who is this? Hey! What's going well, hey, on, you man? Hey, man? Hey, Missy. Hey. hey. Who is oh, this? Hey, this is Kyra. Hey, Kyra, Missy. It's nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Yeah. Where, how did y'all meet? I met her at the post office this morning. Huh. So I said, hey, let me open the door for you. And next thing you know, we was talking about fishing and catching fish, and she showed me some pictures, and I showed her some pictures, and 
A fish? Fish. Yeah. Mm. You never know where you're gonna meet somebody. We just got to talking about fishing. And yeah, I got, I got she it. She can bait her own hook. That, that means a lot. Well, I'll be. Well, it's nice to meet you. It's nice Very to nice meet you. Me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's my friend. All right. She likes to fish. What was that? I'm shocked. Okay, well, here's the predicament. What? We both lost. Let's just call it even. No, I'm kind of sore. Well, I want my truck washed in. Well, that truck is dirty, so All right, since you I'll... better make this count. Oh, I'll make it count. I'll start off with a public display of affection in yes. front of all my family. Yes. And then I'll end with a little bit of fireworks oh, gosh. in private. Not in front of your family. <laughs> in private. When you've been with someone for a while, it's easy to fall into the same old patterns. But if you challenge yourself, you can recapture the magic that made you fall in love in the first place. You might be surprised where that can lead you. Whether it's sharing a homemade drive-in movie with your family and friends, or finding out that matchmaking is a lot tougher than it looks. But those unexpected moments are part of what makes life worth living. And popcorn smothered in butter helps too. Jace, what are you doing? Open up a massage parlor over there? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. This is the last shot. Money. Oh, oh, that was so close. I thought you had it. There's like a force field around no, the No, force field. All right, guys, y'all need to get back to work. Oh, God hit me right in the face. Man, let's finish this game. You're not finishing this game. Hmm. What? What is that? What is it? Grapes? No grapes ain't that big. Walnuts. Catfish bait. Thought it may have been grapes, but rotten beef jerky? It ain't grapes. Too big to be grapes. Hey. Grapes? It smells like crap. Bingo. Phil, this isn't yours, is it? No, that come from a beaver. Here's the thing, when beavers start coming around, it's all hands on deck. Why did you bring the dung to the office? So I could teach you about how to track a varmint. He could have just called and told us. You have to have a visual. The problem with these boys is you just can't tell them. You have to give them a visual cue. Just call me Phil, follow the dung, Robinson. In law, it's called habeas corpus, as in show me the body. With beavers, it's habeas dungus. Show me the dung. What I need, boys, is a few good men for a beaver hunt in the morning. Who's volunteering? Oh, I'm in. I'm definitely in. Yeah, I love poop. I'll do it. Good work, Jeff. I'm in. Mullet man's in. John Luke, what are you doing here? Y'all ready to help me out? I can't. I got to take Bella to karate practice. Huh? <laughs> hey. You had grief. What about you two heavy ones? You boys no, in? No, 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 no. These two are staying to work. Hey. We can live with it. We got a pretty good crew. In the morning, be ready to go. Phil, hey, you're leaving your... Yeah, you can have it. John Luke, take that. What are you doing? Trying to balance the spoon on my nose. Don't eat with that spoon, Will. It's just hot breath. That's gross. <gasps> Ooh. Hi. <Yeah. laughs> that girl is ready for her karate class. Ah. The other day, Corey signed Bella up for a karate class. I think it's an awesome idea. You look just like Karate Kid. I thought Karate Kid was a boy. That was a girl Karate Kid. Hillary Swank. 
I actually never had a chance to take karate, mostly because my mom would never take me to karate. So a very small part of me is living vicariously through Bella, my little karate kid. I guess that makes me Miyagi. The only karate kid I know of was Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith, that's the remake. I actually thought of myself as a karate kid, but now I guess I'm more Miyagi, like a younger, handsomer Miyagi. The real karate kid is Ralph Mancio. OK, enough arguing about the movies. We got to go to karate, huh, Bella? What is that? All right. <clears throat> Looks like she does need some classes. <laughs> Beaver dung up ahead. They're here. Yep, I smell them. He smells them, boys. It'll lead you to the beaver dam. Just follow the dung. What a beaver dung means is that you have located beaver. Well, they don't like me, and I don't like them either. What's left of them? So, so the feeling is mutual, right? The feeling is mutual. Beavers eat entire trees. What do you do if you own a bunch of land? You say, I don't want to see this all turned into dead snags. Why would the Almighty even make a beaver? That is a good question. I've talked with them to try to get them to understand it, but uh, they won't work with me. Therefore, it's what fool with us, you need to act. You follow their dung and put a bullet in their head. Look here, boys. All y'all got to do is find his living room for me, and then I'll introduce him to my little friend here. A Mayhaw jelly? OK. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's what it looked like, but hey, this is what we call in Nam napalm. So si, why did you put that in with the dynamite? Dynamite is explosive, and so is this jungle jelly. We're talking about two very unstable things together. Three if you count the dynamite. Hey, look, if you blown up one beaver dam, you know, hey, you could have blown up a million of them. That's why you got to keep things interesting, OK? We have instability on one leg, yeah. instability hey. on another leg, hey. being held together hey. by the most unstable man I know. That's right. Me. Danger, that is the spice of life. And there's nothing more dangerous than my homemade jungle jelly napalm. This is to blow something up with. It'll keep you on your toes. Hey, look, and if you don't watch it, it'll blow your toes clean off. We fixing to have us a big fireball going here, boys. So all we have to do is follow the dome. Y'all ready? Yeah, yep. let's go. Let's go. Hey, you think hey. we ought to divide that napalm from the dynamite? <laughs> no. Okay, let's start stretching out to the side. Oh, they already started. Let's put our fist out, right hand back. I've been a huge karate fan ever since I was a kid, so it's nice to see Bella following in my footsteps. Cheech. Cheech. Hutch. Hutch. Coo. But what I really like is she can kick the crap out of any boys that come her way. Hey, Bella, you want to guess? <laughs> Karate chop to the mouth. Karate. How you doing? Hey, hey Bob Allen. Hey. hey, Bob, how you doing? I'm Willie. Doing good. And this is Hi. Bella. Remember from last time? She's you ready to start so today? Excited. She's ready. She she's practiced been warming some up moves. This yeah. Who was teaching her that? Uh, well, yeah, she's probably picked up some stuff by watching me, but yep. everybody loves punching and kicking. There's only one way to do it, and that's the correct way. I have to admit, I'm kind of jealous of Bella. I always wanted to take a karate class. Well, why not today? Willie, you ready to join us? Yep. OK, you pretty flexible. Mm. OK, come up over here. When I was a kid, I tried to teach myself karate. But being self-taught did have some drawbacks, like the time I tried to do the splits like Jean-Claude Van Damme. It's always good to have someone who is flexible coming into the class as a white belt, right? Right. You know that chair thing where you did the splits on the chairs? <laughs> Bad idea. There's nothing in the middle to catch you, so I went rip. OK, let's go halfway down this way. Let's go a little bit more. A little bit more. When you look to your left and your right, and both of your legs are like this, it is bad news. Uh, let's, uh, a little bit more. That's it. More. That's all I got, Bob. Good job. That's all you got. OK, well, let's come back up. Whew. A little winded there. <laughs> well, we didn't do very much. I'm ready. You ready? Ready to go, Bob? It's Sensei. Sensei. Back in your place over here. We ready? Bob's getting angry. It's Sensei. Ooh. Well, well, well. Yep, there 
there's the mother of all baby dams. We have hit the mother we have boys. identified the problem, boys. For beaver dams go, OK, look, you may come up on one. It's a one-room cabin. Another one, OK, may be a two-room cabin. How many beavers does it take to construct something like this? And this one here? Hey, we're talking about a palace. Some of them like luxury. It's like the Death Star, like Castle Grayskull. Don't want to be in the water, OK? That's the low-rent district, OK? This is the sophisticated beavers, OK? <laughs> Pretty good one, ain't it, Yep, that's a good one there. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Do you realize y'all do that anymore? Do what? Do what? You're repeating everything Phil says. Why do you do that? Why do you always repeat that? Let's do this. Well, are we going to do this or not? See, you did it again. You did do it again. It's starting to get on my nerves. It's been getting on my nerves. Uh, y'all both lost y'all's mind. Are we going to blow this thing, or are we going to sit here and talk about it? Oh, we're going to blow it all right. Boom. Boom! John Luke, let's get the dynamite. Hey, when we come up on the beaver dam like that, at first there's a little bit of oh no, but that quickly turns to oh yeah. Because I get to use dynamite today. Get Si away from the dynamite. I'll get the napalm, boys. We Y'all don't get the dynamite. Need the napalm. There's no better feeling because hey, it makes me feel like dying old mate. Hold this like you would a young baby bird. Remember, it's harmless as long as you're a couple of hundred yards away from it. So how'd you bring that spool of safety fuse? I don't know nothing about no safety fuse. I asked you if you had some. You said, yes, I'll bring it. You don't remember that conversation? I do not recall that. I said, I'll bring the dynamite, you bring the safety fuse. Now, see, them two don't go together. If you bring the dynamite, you got to bring everything that goes with it. We had a conversation about it. I don't it. recall that conversation. Well, let me get this right. You don't remember that conversation? No. Nobody brought the safety fuse? No. Have I got to do everything? If you're going to do everything, you got to start by doing something. It's actually a good point, Sam. No. Are you ready, Willie? Okay. Yep. We don't say yep. We say yes, sensei. Left hand back. Straight punch. Eight. Hey! Knee. Hey! Hey! You're going to kick and snap back. Eight. Oh. I don't know what that is. Try to do just like the sensei does. Hey! How do you get a break? Willie, no talking in class. Go, go, go. Come on, Willie. Bella, go for me. Good, and snap back really fast. Punch, hey! coop, ki Hey! It's a lot of kicking. Get the knee up high. Oh. Uh, so I'll come up again. We just sat down. Woo! Are you okay, babe? No, I'm not okay. Oh. Push up position. Oh, crap. Very good. Oh. <laughs> Willie. Huh? You, you with us, Willie? No, back stiff. Take a look up at this sign, Willie. What does that say? No whining in karate. Willie. Really? No whining. Well, there's no whining, there's no fighting, there's no hitting. This is stupid. You have to train. Trust the process, Willie. Ah, uh, pipe down, Confucius. I could just go to town and buy a roll of fuse. Hey, look, all you got to do is put napalm all over the dam, light it, and then, hey, it'll take care of the dynamite. But how would you set the napalm off? Well, we could just Rambo it. What do you mean? There are three people in my life that I have taken combat advice from. The Lord Almighty, my dad, and John Rambo. Fire arrow. Four words. Flaming arrow ignites dynamite. That work? I've been waiting for this day a long time. 
No, you've seen the Olympics. Yeah, the problem was he missed. They had to fake light it. Huh? Yeah, it didn't work. Legolas could do it. Who? He's an elf. You talking about like a Christmas elf? Nope. Who are you talking about? Legolas. Where does he live? Dude, you've never watched Lord of the Rings? I say we just go for it. Well, we don't have much choice, really. I'm getting the napalm, boys. What's the worst thing that could happen? We could all die. Let's do it. OK, let's go again. Your feet together. Inside? Yes. What happened to your toe? Did that happen doing karate? No, actually, it was from running. OK. I just had a bunionectomy and hammer toe this year. Too much information. OK, we're going to go into sparring now. We need to get our gear on. Sweet. Let's hit somebody. Finally, let's get to some real karate. Oh, no, no, we don't touch the weapons. This is what I've been waiting for. I'll show you how to put it on in just a minute. I think I can figure it out. Uh, probably better to wait and let me help you. Seriously, though, the kid gloves are coming off. Just as soon as I get these stupid pads on. Everybody have their partners? Whoa, 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 whoa. Bob. It's Sensei. OK, this is not what I was thinking. I don't think anything about this is right. This is so. just easy sparring. Hey! Bob, are you sure this is legitimate? Hey! Oh, hang on, hang on. I don't think anything about this is right. This is so. just easy sparring. Don't hurt her. I don't I don't even want to. Let's go to fighting stance. Hey! Fight. Oh, hang on. Oh, oh. oh, shoot. I'm all for Willie pursuing his passions. Hey! Oh, 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 oh. I'm just not sure karate is the right passion for Willie. Like he's oh, oh, oh. Make sure you kick to the head also. Oh. I mean, karate's all about like discipline, and Willie's not really the most nimble, in shape, no retreat, no surrender type of guy. Oh. Great job, babe. Oh. But I'm, I'm really proud of him for trying. Oh. Hang on, Bob. I can't just hit the hey. ball. Gracie, good shot. Bob, this isn't fair. I'm sure there's several laws saying I can't hit this child, so. OK, yummy. Everybody, about each other, we're going to do some takedown defense. All right. OK, let's have your hands up in fighting position. Not quite like that, like this. Bob, I don't want to step on your toe, because that thing can't get any more mangled than it already is. My toe's going to be OK. You don't need to worry about my toe. That toe's not OK. It's freaking me out. Look at okay. that. Whoa! Oh, yeah! <laughs> you OK, babe? Oh. Oh. <sighs> Willie? You OK? Nope. 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 Ah. Oh. Oh. So far, today hasn't gone exactly how I thought it would. Rather than throwing punches, I just feel like throwing up. Dad, are you all right? Give me a second, Bella. Remember, no whining in karate. Let me tell you something, quasi-toe man. Who wants to see it again? Bella, put your hand up. You ain't got to throw me down that hard just to prove you can. <laughs> My back feels like your toe looks terrible. You have a masseuse on here? No, but we have the sign over here that says no whining in karate. Oh, Bob. We do have that. Get off that sign. OK, let's get ready to bow out. Willie, you come to the end. Uh, hey, I'm glad I took this class with Bella. To be honest, I took it a little slow because I didn't want to steal her thunder. Today was about her. Well, am I the best around? Uh, you're my karate kid. Great. Hey, I'm a fourth degree black belt in parenting. We're out of here. See you, brother. Great. Hey, Bob, seriously, you need to go see a podiatrist. You don't need to worry about my toe. All right, boys. Light it. Lighten it up. Slit. Safety off.
can't believe it. You missed that whole beaver down. Legolas could do it. Maybe that's some faulty napalm. Hey, I don't think you hit it. Si, you can't even yeah. see from back oh, there. I can't. Just right in beaver sticks. Woof. I think I peed my pants a little. Oh, Jeff peed in his pants. That's all it took with some dynamite and some precision shooting. Did you notice the flame on it? Thanks to yours truly and the J-E-L-O. Oh, no! Whoa, whoa. Hey. OK. All right. OK, boys. A little secondary there. That was a beaver blowing up. Yeah. He got to it. But a flaming arrow came through. I feel like I'm ready for the Hunger Games now. Hey, look, speaking of that, I'm hungry. Yeah. I could eat a bite. Yeah. 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 There's always room for napalm, boys. Mission accomplished. Let's pray. Father, thank you for adopting us as your children. We're humbled by that. Thank you for another day on planet Earth. It's through Jesus, I ask his prayer. Amen. Amen. Getting older can be a funny thing. When you're young, all you want to do is grow up. But when you get older, you miss being young. But what I've learned is just because you're getting older doesn't mean you have to grow up. If you want to blow up a beaver dam, go for it. If you want to take Haidate with your 10-year-old daughter, do it because life is about finding the balance between being a responsible adult and staying young at heart, even if it means getting beat up by a freakishly strong little girl. So, pass me that Mayhaw jelly. No, that's jungle jelly, Jack. I'm talking about... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff, you are way off. Oh, oh, look at that. Nice. Yeah. You're looking at the wrong hole? Look, you need to buy my video, Four Steps to improve your golf game. It'll help you, son. That was embarrassing. Well, I can't help it. My whole body's sore. No. Dude, I've been sleeping on an air mattress waiting on my house renovations to get done. I love air mattresses. Have you ever slept on one with kids? Jess and I finally decided to move into Willie and Jace's neighborhood, so we bought a fixer-upper. Your arm will get stuck under somebody, and you wake up, and you have no feeling in that arm. I hate that. Only problem is, I wasn't aware of how much fixer upper needs to be done. Throw the kid off of the bed and move your arm. Simple, boys. So now we're staying with the in-laws. It's not very fun at all. Renovation is tough on a marriage. But it takes a lot of money, and there's no, you know, no place to be intimate. So. Oh, you can get intimate on an air mattress. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. I tried that. Run no, them can. kids out. Yes, you can. That thing deflates in a hurry. Floating on air, son. You go rent a motel room. Another <laughs> one in the pool. They say that the three most difficult things in a marriage, sex, money, renovating your home. Nice factoid. You know what the key to it is? What? Hey, be happy. Well, it's hard to be happy when you get your arms numb for weeks. Hey, this one's been numb for 40 years. What's that got to do with it? How much longer is it going to take? I don't know. Well, look, you can stay at my place. Oh, yeah, stay with Si. Hey, I got plenty of room. That wouldn't be stressful in a marriage. So I got four kids. They're kind of loud. Hey, I, I love kids. I got Cheerios. You got what? Look here, my house. I got all the stuff kids care about. No, 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 I don't want to impose. There's no reposition at all, son. I've got high thread count sheets, OK? In-house washing and dryer. Great water pressure. Stress-free situation, boys. I got a pretty neat cat. He's cool. His name is Sweet Pea. I don't think I'm going to stay at your house. The best part, I got one of them little robot maids, dune buggy or whatever it is called, goombung or whatever it is, y'all. It appears out of nowhere and it's sucking up everything on the floor. All you hear is eek. Here it comes, OK? Taking a shower and you hear eek. You know, uh-oh. You know Lisa and I work with couples all the time. You ever need any help, I'm there for you. Actually, I could use your help tomorrow. I'm moving boxes and my chicken coop. Moving's not really my bang, though. Well, y'all are in, right? Yeah. I'm out on the moving. How convenient. No, I promised the kids I'd take them fishing. We have been planning this for weeks. Since when are you coming? Weeks. Well, I need y'all's help. This is a no chicken zone. The neighborhood watch said no farm animals. These aren't farm animals. They're domesticated chickens. That's just stupid. Oh, well, do they have names? It's like Winky, Boo Boo. What? You can't have pets with names like that. My kids named them, not me. No, they need to have names like 
Blazer and Slash, Rambo. Look, do your chickens do tricks? Yes, they lay eggs. That's not a trick, yeah. That's what they do. That's, That's natural. I got a trick for them. Fry them up and then call me. God, I'm getting chicken crap all over my fingers. Why didn't you just back your truck down here, you idiot? I got new tires. It's a truck. Uh, I, there's nails, too, dude. What? Oh, good grief. You're not even lifting, I can tell. I am. Move your hands right now. Mm-hmm. Somebody's got to steer it. <laughs> You're welcome. When Jeff said he needed help moving a chicken coop, I thought he meant an actual chicken coop, not a crappy little chicken cage. Where do you want it? Right here. Set her down. Disembarking. I mean, if the movie Saw was about chickens, this is where they'd end up. It'd be like two chickens with big decisions of what's gonna happen, but you gotta get out of this thing. Why don't you take the chickens out? Because they'll peck you. Them are purdy chicken. So right wow. here, this will be covered. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. Thanks. This will be an outdoor kitchen. I've got chicken poop on my hands, Jep. I stepped in dog crap. There's too much poop around here, Jep. I love so, it. And the great. view of the pond is beautiful. Thank you. This is gonna be so great. Thanks for good. that. Jep, has that coop always looked that old, babe? It's shabby chic. That's what you like. No, I've never said that. She says it like every day. You're not gonna leave that there, are you? Are you embarrassed by my chicken coop? I'm embarrassed. My chicken coop is a work of art. I'm kind of concerned about the chickens. Look how it's like leaning. It's like the leaning tower of chicken coops. Mmm. Huh. I built it with my own two hands. The way this yard looks, I think it's fine. It's an improvement. It's not just a chicken coop. It's a representation of me. You got a broke board right there. You've got more problems than just that door. It's fabulous. You're gonna be out here grilling, smelling chicken poop. You gotta move it away. You just don't want it right in the middle of the view. Like, oh, ever. wait, uh -oh. Godwin, what are you doing? I'm good with chicken. What's Sean doing? Godwin's the chicken whisperer. I'm gonna call you a regional recipe. Godwin, this ain't normal. I'm gonna call you extra crispy. <laughs> Godwin, don't eat my chickens. All right, Godwin, you babysit the chickens. I gotta wash my hands. Yeah, I'm gonna give you all the tour. The tour of a gutted house? And I'm gonna call you spicy. Godwin, don't eat those chickens. I wouldn't eat you guys. Not till you're bigger anyway. Okay, boys, it's all in the hips. Si, you don't have any hips. Hey. Si. This is a piece of junk. All right, let's see what you got. Uh-oh, look at them. Yeah. Look at them go. Uh. River like a cowboy. Uh-oh. What? What in the world? Uh. <laughs> what is and, that? Oh, incoming. Whoa, 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 what? Boom! What does it look like? It looks like a bunch of soda. That's exactly what I thought you'd say. In the yuppie world, when they want to have a moment with their kids, they take a bunch of balloons and they, like, let them go. You're going to have so much fun that you're not going to care whether we catch anything or not. What we do is we take a bunch of jugs, we put them out there in the water with bait on them, and we say, OK, here we go. To the untrained eye, it looks like a bunch of soda. These are soda bottles. We'll have little fishermen and little fisherwomen before the end of the day. Why do you have all these? I ran up on old Jimbo, and he had a pallet of soda. And he was going to throw it away because it got recalled or something. Si. No! Sigh. That's good stuff. You got a shot? That way you can taste it. Sigh, the reason I got this is because it had gotten old. It's no good. Here, take a swig of it. No, 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 no. It no. tastes like sarsaparilla, though. If you want to drink it, that's fine, but don't give it to the kids. That's not it's what it's It's really for. not fine, but. Does anybody want to guess what the best part of jug fishing is? Catching fish? Eating fish. Breaking the soda. Uh, incorrect. You ready for it? You take your bottle. Just take the bottle. Hey, babe, dead, I got okay. news for you. You get the mojo working. This is the third most fun part of jug fishing. One, 
Jay, Jace, I don't, I don't know about this. Oh, no, it's a good idea. Two? Yeah. Jace, this is not a good idea. Oh, yeah, this is a great idea. Jace, I think you should rethink oh, this. Oh, no, this is a good idea. Go, oh, Jace! Hey, 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 save your shoes! Hey, I'm hey, out of yourself, here. Boy. Babe, where are you going? I'm gone. Oh, save your shoes? Me, me, you're not, you're not on. Oh, my God. Hey, no. Look, I got a live one here. You got a live one, boy. I got a live one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here it coming. All right, who's ready to go jug fishing? Kitchen's going to be awesome. That was the kitchen? Yeah. So what do you call this? My cribs TV room. It looks just like another gutted room, just like the rest of the house. Yeah, use your imagination, dude. God, I still smell poop on my hands. Smell this. Yeah, you got a little something there. Ooh, it's strong. Dude, don't wipe it on the mantle. I thought everything in it was trash. Dude, that thing was from 1906. Is it the only thing that you kept out of this house? It was the only thing Jessica liked. Everything else she didn't care for. I know Jeff is pretty excited about turning this room into his man cave, but this place is a disaster. We basically bought a frame. You may or may not have a spider infestation. Everywhere you look, there's like spider webs. It's dirty, spider infested, and to be honest, it smells like animal crap. So you pretty much just bought a mantle that came with a house frame. This man cave is more like that ugly chicken coop out in the yard. Man coop. Guess that'd be a moop. Guys. Tell us what uh, color y'all like. I'm not good at that stuff. This is a bad Come deal. On. We just need we to know your opinion. And then here's Sweet Serenity. What? Mm. Mm. I say we go with Sweet Serenity because it'll go perfect with my 80-inch LED 4D Ultra HD TV. 4D? Y'all are getting an 80-inch TV? No, chap. We... It's on layaway. No, yep. we talked about the family portrait no. going right here. You were going to get a more reasonably sized TV. Man, I used to be so cool. Like, I was, like, ripped. My hair was all cool, had lots of gel in it. 80 inches is reasonably sized. That's true. I could just break wind whenever I felt like it. That's a bit ridiculous. They make them to like 120 these days. So no, he's like right in the is, middle. It's not a movie theater, ding dong. Then I married Voldemort, a really, really hot Voldemort. Nevertheless, she cast a spell on me and all the fun went <laughs> You gotta think about it like this, what's better? An 80-inch LED 4D Ultra HD TV or a family portrait? A family portrait. The kids are already in 3D, so I don't... Yeah, you can watch them run around. Yeah. Yeah, an 80-inch TV is real practical, babe. That's it is. about as practical as it gets. I don't think so. Yes. It's going to look tacky, just like that coop out there. Let me tell about my coop. When Jeff gets his mindset on something, it is really hard to change it. But there is a shortcut to getting him to see things my way. I call it the look. Sometimes Jess makes its face. I think she's trying to tell me something, but I, I, I ain't getting it. Well, babe, you gotta do something with it. Either paint it, rebuild it, definitely move it. Burn it. Burn it and rebuild it is a good option. I'll take care of it. I give you, Mia, drum roll. There you go. I give you the perfect jug rig. All we need is some bait. Are you gonna put the worm on? Sure. See that? You know I don't have yuppie kids. When I was a kid, I would go jug fishing. I right, pick you out a big juicy one. Big juicy. Ew. Is that a juicy one? Squeeze it. See if it's juicy. We would put out the jugs with a string hanging from the jug, with a hook on it, and with bait. And he knows what's coming, Mia, so that's why he's squirming. He's hanging on for dear life. Oh no, 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 Mia. He's hanging on for dear death. This ain't his first rodeo. But I will guarantee you, these kids will not be bored. It was Jeez. bleeding. No, it's not blood. That worms don't bleed. That's just well, what is it? You know, I think it's poop. Ugh. I'm never high-fiving you again. <laughs> They're gonna have some fun. So, 
I've told you to quit drinking that grape soda. Uh, what, is that your second bottle? That's too been up. So you've got four liters of grape soda in you? Hey, look, everybody's always so concerned about me. Everybody lighten up, OK? You're not worried about all that soda being inside of you? No. Soda better be worried about being inside of me. I wouldn't be scared, too. Look, I made it to a tour in Nam, OK? I've been married 43 years, OK, to a flaming redhead. <laughs> hey, Zilla, did you do that? A heart attack, two kids, eight grandkids. Well, if you see Cy uh, explode, uh, somebody call 911. And then the worst part, 15 years with Willie as my boss. 911 can't help you, Daryl. Good grief. Hey, look, if I survive through all of that, ain't no grape soda gonna kill me. Look, let's get them all out in the water. Because Cy could blow at any moment. And that's gonna be the end of the fishing trip. You might want to. Get a little distance here. All right, be careful, boys. I think I'm fixing to blow. Dude, first we're invading this house. Now we got the stupid coop. I'm starting to get stressed. Is that why you're sweating so much? I know. You need to relax. This is like when I was playing COD, I had like 25 kills. Game system poops out. Exact same feeling. Well, that didn't cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, it felt like it did. Jeb needs to focus on what is important here, retaining his dignity. I don't know what to do with this chicken coop, though. Get a new chicken coop. Women like brand new things, so at least buy a brand new chicken coop. Throw that in the trash. If that is stressing you in any way, go burn it. Don't try to be the hero and fix it. Just buy a new one. You've got a heap of crap here that you're going to have to renovate. You need to be thinking about that. That's what I need to do. Just renovate the chicken coop. No. Leave them things in the closet. Let them be house pets. So let me tell you a little bit about how marriage works. This is what I gotta do. Refurbish the chicken coop. I fix that up, well, all my problems are solved. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So you have your stuff, and she has her stuff. And then this stuff turns into Pac-Man, and it goes. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you, it's worked before. I just fix it up, she'll, she'll dig it. This chicken coop is the last thing I have left. But there comes a time in every man's life where he gives up his last shred of dignity to get a little pat-pat. You can do way better than that. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Pizza? Heck yeah, let's eat pizza. It's a great stress reliever. No, it's a breadsticks? Uh -huh. Stuff crust? It's about the chicken coop. Get your hunting stuff, meet me out here. It looks pretty out there. It looks pretty? I don't know about pretty. Oh no, hey, she's right, it is pretty. That's the prettiest minefield I've ever seen. How are we supposed to even catch them? You just watch the jugs, and when you see one start moving violently. Oh, you... there's one right there moving. So that's called the wind. Maybe I'm a little sloopy from all the grape sodas I've drank. Yeah, you're definitely under the influence. Uh... Hey, you drink four liters of, you know, penumbral soda. Hey, you'll be a little sloopy too. I don't even know what sloopy means. Soda loopy. Hey, look, I'm so sloopy, I gotta pee. Look, there's one. Bigger than wheels. Hey, nature's calling. And hey, sorry. I'll be right back. You done talked me right into it. Bunza! <laughs> Go get that bottle. Yeah. Get him, sir. <laughs> look, look, Uncle Sai got one. Look at this sucker, boys. Mission accomplished. Go, 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 go. There we go. Right get him, River. River. The kids not only had fun, hey. they will be telling this story for years. All right, y'all ready? Oh my goodness. They will be gathered around a campfire and tell about the day. Hey, look right there. We sent out the minefield of jugs. <laughs> and we caught a 30-pound beast. Hey, kids, y'all gonna have to go get them. 
I'm all pernurpled out. And their uncle overloaded on expired grape soda. We should go jug fishing more often. Yeah. Hey, Jess, Corey, y'all come check this out. Y'all are fast. Hey. All right, what is that? Pretty awesome, huh? Awesome's not what I'm thinking, babe. What is that? This is the camouflage coupe. All right, look, sometimes it takes Jessica a little time to come around to the good ideas I have. It looks like a bush. And some ideas take longer than others. It's just like a duck blind. You cannot see it. Ducks can't see it. Humans can. It's perfect. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. She'll get there. Like, we see it right there. But you can't see me. Martin, we will always see you. Well, you definitely can't see Big Godwin. God, where is Godwin? Godwin, are you in there? Ah! Oh, my goodness. Hey, it's shady. It's got hay. It's got water. And poop. Yeah, there's a little bit of poop, but it's shady. See? He likes it. Godwin, you didn't poop in there, did you? See, it's perfect, Jess. But I thought it would be a little more chicken coopy, maybe with a little paint on it. But this one is free. They make nice ones. Leave it to these guys to turn a crappy coop into something even crappier. We're going to be sitting out here eating, smelling chicken poop. I mean, if I wanted a duck blind in the back of my yard, I'd just live on Fields Land. It's even bigger than it was before. It's a ding-dong move. Boards, nails, paint, boom, you're done. The point was we didn't want it in our view. You made it larger. It's taking up more of the view. Now I can't see any of the pond. It's just a random bush growing. Putting old sticks on that old coop is not making it cuter. I think it looks pretty good, and it's free. You would. Chet, why don't we just scrap this old coop and get a new one? A good marriage is all about compromise. Unfortunately, it's usually the man that has to do it. All right, I love you. That's what we'll do. Thanks, babe. But in a great marriage, you learn to pick and choose your battles. All right, Jess, if I get rid of that coop, can I get a big screen TV? We'll talk about that later, babe. I may have lost the coop battle, but I will win the TV war. Hey, wait on me. Come on. Bring your chickens. Come on, little buddy. I'm coming. All right, Jeff, it's your house, sort of. So you offer a prayer, my man. Let's pray. Lord, I just want to thank you so much for this family and what they mean to me. And I pray your hand on these renovations. In your son's name, amen. 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 There's no denying it. Sometimes our families are a source of grief. Sure, it's frustrating to deal with. At times, can even get a little dirty. But at the end of the day, they're our family. Bending over backwards is always worth it when it's for someone that you love. Because in this family, we know blood is thicker than the waters we fish in, and definitely thicker than all that expired soda in size bladder. But nothing's thicker than the smell of chicken crap. It will not leave my fingers. Hey, Si, si pull my finger. Nothing happened. Now smell Willie. Wow, that's pretty cool, Jeff. I think I'm gonna get one of these there. Uh, that's what I need. Put right that there. up, dude. You don't need that. Hey, I do need this. Jace, put it up. If you had to have one weapon in the woods, what would you go with? One weapon? One weapon. Probably a ninja throwing star. Ninja throwing star. Why am I not surprised? Willie has this obsession with ninjas. You don't have the body type for a leotard. I think there's a weight limit on ninjas. When he takes off running, he looks like two possums fighting over a dead squirrel in a tow sack. You couldn't even get in a ninja suit. Real ninjas are, have all kind of different body weights. I think he's more like a sumo wrestler than a ninja. Have you ever seen Enter the Ninja? No. Oh, no. Philip McMillan. What? <laughs> What's going on, duck boys? Jace? What about it, Dimples? Dude, nobody calls me Dimples anymore. Really? Because I just did. Jace and I have known Philip McMillan since high school. He's the guy who thinks he is the best at everything. When you're 21 and still in high school, yeah, you're pretty good at stuff. How's the duck business going? It's going great. How's the whatever you do? This is what you're into now? Riding lawnmowers in town? This is just my ride-around mower. My racing rig is what I'm really proud of. 
Huh? I hate lawnmowers. Let's get rid of them all. The world would be a better place. If you combine the time you waste cutting grass with the time you waste shaving your face, we'd be going to Venus, you know, and we could be doing whatever. You ever won any of these races? Yeah, I win them all. If you boys are interested, y'all might want to meet me up there for a little race on Saturday night. Are you challenging me? If y'all could put something together. You can talk any redneck into a challenge. I beat the crap out of you in the lawnmower. That's why so many rednecks die in such strange ways. Because he would rather be dead than disrespected. Well, get all your boys together, fix up whatever you want, and let's get it on. I just might Done. have to do that. I'll be waiting. Put a darn shirt on, dude. See you at the races. Yeah, I hit him right in the forehead with a throwing <laughs> star. I was thinking. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. Hey, I'm about to ruin. Hi, Si. Hey, stop what you're doing, because I'm about to ruin the image and the sound you're used to. Look here. I love that Humpty song. Stop cramping my style, man. Hey, forget the duck calls. Mm-hmm. This is serious, boys. Look, here's the deal. We've been challenged. Who challenged us? Philip McMillan. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Needless to say, I can't stand the guy. Who can? Hey, he stole my favorite hat one time, and I got a sunburn on my head. He made fun of my beard. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, you never insult a man's beard. You think we get either thunder or lightning. Either one. Where did you see him at? At the hardware store, riding his lawnmower. I ain't never seen him on nothing else. He challenged us to a race. A race? What, racing lawnmowers? A lawnmower race. What we gonna do, who, see who can cut the most grass? No, sir, a race. We get in a line and we race, and whoever's the fastest wins. So here's what I need you to do. We're gonna have a time trial at my house. Go get your lawnmower, meet me there in two hours. What are we gonna do, mow your grass? Sir! Si. Uh, I don't know what y'all talking about. Bring your lawnmower. No, we're gonna go over and mow his grass. <laughs> All right, girls, today I'm making a duck gumbo for Papa Phil. But you know how you start off making it? You make a roux. You're making kangaroo? It's just called a roux. What's that? That is a sauce. Hey, buddy. The older women teaching the younger women how to cook. Now, that's a good thing there. Isn't that a pretty picture? When you see your grandkids all gather around and Mama is showing them how to cook a roux, I consider that a very positive thing especially in this culture. What are we doing, little chickies? We're cooking here? We're making gumbo. If she surprised me with a duck gumbo out of the clear blue, that usually means there's ulterior motives in there somewhere. She's up to something. Whoa! What's in the box, Miss Kate? Oh, this little country cottage I got for the girls, but I just need you to put it together. Yep, I, I get it now. Well, suppose I don't put this house together today. Well, suppose I don't serve you this gumbo today. If Miss Kay thinks she's gonna get me to do her bidding by cooking me a gumbo, she's got another thing coming there. What is this, though? I don't know, I'll figure it out. What is it, What? What? Is it what? No, the bottom line is I'm just glad I didn't have a house full of girls. Seems rather nightmarish to me. What is this guy? Where is this guy? Don't just stand there. I'll pick it up. Yeah, put that over there. Ooh, I feel sorry for that poor soul that has to raise them. Glad it didn't happen to me. What in the world? Cuteness and sweetness is good with granddaughters for about, what, a minute or two? Tell them hit the road. Go back in the back room and play dolls or whatever they do. I tell you what, look, go see Miss Kay and then come back and I'll get it fixed. Beth Alfio, do you know what you're doing? I'll fix it. Are you sure? See you later. Good grief. Look, we're doing a time trial here. 
We're doing three laps to see who has the best motor, best driving skills, and all around best driving demeanor. Now it's on to the time trials. It's time to take these mowers out in the open lawn and clean the pipes out. Does anybody have a lawn mower like post 1995? This thing's about 45 years old, but hey, it'll still run. Hey, this is a 1965 Prague Menace Grasshopper. This one is made for leisurely driving, boys. You know, take it slow and easy, like the tortoise and the hare, boys. Hey, who won that? You know, it was a cat that took it slow and easy. Hey, it's the praying menace. <laughs> anyway, Jeff, what are you what are you running? It's all I got is a push mower. What kind of race is it in anyway? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think that T might have turned on you. Let's be honest, this time trial is just for show. I really just wanted the guys to come out and see how good I was on the lawnmower. I think I've got this thing locked down. Whoa, seriously? What are you doing? We've got our entire Duck Commander workforce sitting in my yard on old lawnmowers. We fixed out a lawnmower race. Time trial. Whatever. I thought y'all were kidding when you were talking about this. Well, I don't kid when somebody challenges my manhood. Hey, he started this war. This is about Philip McMillan. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if we're throwing rocks. But if he challenged us to who could fly a kite the highest, we'd all be out there with strings, you know? It's about manhood, standing up and being a man. This is what we do. All right, gentlemen, start your engines. Do I feel stupid? Oh, yeah. I'm on a lawnmower in Willie's backyard with other grown men. Would I rather look stupid than disgraced by a redneck? I'll take stupid every day. All right, uh -huh. Between the five of us here, I figure we can get this 10 acres cut, what, 30 minutes? Hey, this praying mantis, smooth cutting. It's like when a woman goes to a beauty parlor, okay? She went in there looking like an old hag, and then she comes out looking like Dolly Parton. Hey, get out of the way. Look out, look out, look out. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Hey, you want a man. Just like I thought, big winner. But my mower definitely needs some more speed. By the time I get through with it, I'm gonna demolish Philip McMillan. It's time to get serious. I'm talking Philip McMillan. I'm talking right. Philip McVillan. Right. He's going down. He's going down. Yeah. Fire! Yeah. Whoa. That's it. <laughs> Let's get it to the well, warehouse. Let's get out of here. Soup this baby up. I knew I didn't need no directions on something like that. Good night. I figure the granddaughters will be happy, happy, happy when they see the grandpa architectural skills on a playhouse. Yeah, that'll work. Now, that's a fine piece of work right there, if I have to say so myself. What do you think? It doesn't look like the picture. Close enough. No. 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 Boo, you got parts all over there you hadn't even used. I can tell he's tossed the directions one more time, decided to do it all himself, but it's not looking right. What's that? That is where I think you take a leak. Women do not do that. That's nasty. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think they're going to use the commode for anything, so I guess it was there just for decor. So what do y'all think, girls? Are you fired up or what? There's not even a window. You want a window? Yeah. What do you right want, right there. here? All right, back out of the way. You want a window, I'll give you a window. A chainsaw in this part of the country is a redneck's best friend. You can take trees down, you can cut your firewood up, or you can work on grandchildren's playhouses. They are ready to go. Way better. And what else y'all need to do to it? Nothing else! Nothing no, no. Standard equipment. I carry one with me all the time. Climb up in there. What do you think? It's cool. <laughs> Let's take it to a duck blind. Duck blind? Now you talking. I'm going to leave on that. I believe you girls are going to turn out just fine. All 
All right, gentlemen, I think you know why we're all here. Why are we here? We're modifying this mower, you idiot. I told y'all. Hmm. Well, how you do that? We're going to beef it up. It's beefed up. You're sitting on it. Do y'all want to make duck calls? Is that what you want to do? No, I don't want to no. make duck calls. No. no, I like a project. Let's go with it. I'm going to take this regular, ordinary lawnmower and turn it into a super beast racing machine. I've done a little research. This is what I want this looking like. Good well, hey, you got night. a picture of it. Why don't we get that one? That belongs to Philip McMillan. That's some pretty good research here. Got off the internet. It was on his status update. So you're friends with him <laughs> on the internet? Not me, but another name. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. There you go now. Take on. You get a redneck working on a mower, you're gonna get something awesome. You put five rednecks on a mower, you're gonna get something epic. How else can we drop weight? Although y'all are really not good at dropping weight. Stop. 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 What are you doing? It's all about physics and our dynamics. Just trying to do my part, boys. These boys don't know nothing. And hey, I don't know nothing, and I'm the best one there is around this bunch. What are, what are we doing? He said tear it apart, so we're tearing it apart. That doesn't look like the picture. Well, we should have got red up here. He builds racing lawnmower. He does what? Jimmy Red builds racing lawnmowers? Yep. What? Hey, Goblin, I know you're not the smartest pickle in the barrel, but don't you think that would have been pertinent information before we got ourselves in this mess? Does it go fast? Yeah, it goes fast, about 80. Why didn't you open your mouth? I ain't gonna build no duck calls. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Jimmy Red's mower's a whole lot faster than this one, because we ain't losing the Philip McMillan. Here's what we do. We're going to put all this back together. We're taking it back. Good luck with that. Hey, we'll do this tomorrow. Ain't that We're racing to tomorrow. Hey, we can do it in the morning. I'm serious. Hey. Good luck taking that back. There we go. Oh. Y'all push. I'm focusing. Focusing on what? Not doing anything? This is it. This is the big time. We got Jimmy Red's mower, and it looks fast as crap. Oh, here we go. Easy. Yeah, thanks for the help. There's no way we're losing. I'm going to beat the crap out of Philip in this lawnmower race. Whoa. Uh, they got some serious machinery here, boys. I'm telling you one thing, they don't look like they're kidding around. How hard can it be? When I accepted Philip's challenge, I didn't realize that death could occur. Don't be a coward. We can do this. I'm not quitting, because I ain't a quitter. You only live once, but I'm afraid of it. But I am a little concerned. What's the worst thing that can happen to you? I could freaking die. You me all right? Willie is not going to be OK. Let's go. My granddaughter said, let's go with the duck blind. And I said, well, now we are cooking with peanut oil. <laughs> are y'all fired up about these ducks or what? Yeah! I thought so. I said, you know, I am really proud of my granddaughters. <laughs> hey, you never know. They may turn out to be duck hunters. It is never too early to teach them. Well, look out there on that bench in front of you. See them lined up out there? And we're going to see what kind of shots you are. Frack them and stack them. For everybody who hits one of those ducks, that's a crisp $1 bill. I didn't hear any meat pop. I don't think I got it. No dollar for you. I'm trying to teach these grandkids of mine the Robertson way. Put your head down where you look, right down the barrel. I think I missed. I made a valiant attempt, but I'm not making much headway. Put the front sight right on the duck, Mary. She's quick to shoot. You got him. 
<laughs> hey, hey, good work. Y'all some duck hunters down. Ladies and gentlemen, one more yuppie girl moved just a little closer to being a redneck. Did y'all ever play with dolls or duck hunt? Duck hunt! There's still hope for America out there. You girls may make rednecks after all. It's a start. It's a good day. They learned a good lesson there. Hey, were you serious about my dollar? I did say I'd give you a dollar, didn't I, if you hit a duck. You just like a woman. Thank you. All it takes is money. Welcome to the Ike Hamilton Saturday Night Lawnmower Races. Are you ready to assume the role of CEO if something were to happen? Racers, start your mowers. We can do this. We can do it. You going down, duck boy? No, I ain't. You're going down. On your mark, get set. And all I'm getting from him is terror. He won't get off the inner track. He's driving eight miles an hour. He's scared to death. You're OK. You're OK. You're OK. These guys are fast, like supersonic fast. All I'm thinking about right now is don't die. Because if I die, in a weird way, Philip wins. Hey, look at McMillan. Looks like Philip McMillan's having engine trouble. I see that Philip's in trouble. I'm thinking, you know what? We can't win the war, but we could win this battle. Willie can take it. Go, Willie! Philip McMillan bringing up the rear. Forget winning the race. We just want to beat Philip. He's actually got a little speed builder now. is finish. It's a nail fighter to see who can take last place. And Willie takes the lead. We'll take it. Right. You buy the whole seat, but you only need to eat. You were terrible. But hey, you didn't finish last. <laughs> Boom! That's what I'm talking about. Won't you go back and get you an undershirt? Better luck next time. Take them Crocs back to the old trailer house. Hey, right, let's go get something to eat. Hey, wait, we need to go put that lawnmower together. Father, we thank you for another good day on planet Earth. We also thank you for keeping old Willie safe during the race. Amen. 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 Let's eat. A wise man once said, you can't always get what you want, but sometimes you get what you need. Philip McMillan needed his tail whooped in a lawnmower race. My nieces needed some quality redneck time with Papa. And I had the need for speed. Ow! Well, I didn't exactly get that either, but I did learn the value of having a great pit crew and on the race of life, that's your family and friends. They're the ones that make you feel like you've won, even when you come in last. And that's better than any trophy in the world. Hey, Willie, the praying mantis cuts grass way better than the thing you drive. It has nothing to do with grass! <laughs> this algebra homework is killing me. I cannot get this one problem. Two trucks are traveling to a store. Truck A is traveling 30 miles. Truck B is doing something different. Which truck gets there first? This 
is a softball because all you gotta do is pick one or the other. It's all a guess, all right? You have to have a formula or you can't get it right. John Luke, did you take Algebra two? I did. Did you guess? Maybe once. There you go. And and I got it wrong. And he passed, but you passed, so. Okay. What are y'all working on? Well, the old wizard is teaching his little whizlets about algebra and life. And... Algebra two, actually. Mm. Really? You failed Algebra two. No, I didn't. I passed. Straight D's. Don't get me wrong, a good education is as important as it gets. But I don't want my children to go through high school like a bunch of little educated robots. All right, let me see, let me look at that one. All right, here you go, math whiz. Two plus two equals four. So, okay, you've got your, okay, you, mm. The square root of pi's. I have no idea, a lot of numbers. Okay, so it's just a B. right times distance equal time, is that? Something like that. It's something like that. It has to do with that. Just guess. Really? I'll ask Martin. Sure is a lot more space in here without Martin and going. Where are they at? In the bathroom? They're in Wyoming, Zai. They went on a deer hunt. They've been talking about it forever. Anybody heard from them? I've heard from them. They're eating good. Martin. He's in Wyoming. Thanks. When's he coming back? I'm not sure. All I get is weird food selfies. Do I know? That was just one day. All right, I'll just look it up online. Well, what did you need Martin for? Sadie's homework. I've got a math problem. I was going to get Martin to figure out for me. Well, I knew this day would come. Sadie's starting to get math problems that even her business genius dad can't solve. That's the teacher's job. That's what you pay a teacher for, is to do that. Part of me is proud of her, and the other part of me is a little embarrassed. What's the problem anyway? Y'all ain't gonna be able to figure this hey, out. Hey, no, no, I'm pretty good in math. Two trucks are traveling to a store. What kind of store? And yet, another part of me realizes that bringing this problem to the duck car room may not have been the wisest move. All right, a quarter of a mile away. Well, look, we gotta get what kind of store. This is stupid. It's an right. army surplus store. Okay, all right. So truck A is going 30 miles an hour, truck B is going 15 miles an that's hour. That's easy. It's the one that's going 30. It's The question's not over, Si, but truck B gets a 20-second head start. All right. I'll this is in Louisiana? All right, this is why I didn't want to ask you the question, because... The only way to truly solve that is to go do it. Chase, a math problem is so that you don't have to go do it. It's a quarter mile. You get two trucks. We can do this. Why would we go do it? I'm just gonna guess. You do it to impress the teacher. You say, look, not only did I answer the question, I performed the question. I agree with him on that. And you'll look like a hero. That's actually not a bad idea. You do got to think outside the box. Can I be the starter? Sure. <laughs> yeah. You're a weird, Jip. Phil, I've got all kinds of great stuff from the flea market, see? Miss Kay. This would be a present for Jeannie, my friend with the cats. Miss Kay, you need to And look, the best treasure of all, Lammy. Look, he's got a cowboy hat. I'm a cowboy, I'm a lamb, I'm everything. Did you get all this junk at just one flea market? Flea market, Phil. Phil always criticized me because he said I have too much stuff. Stuff that nobody wants. He didn't mean that. Phil just doesn't appreciate cute stuff. You want to wave at the lamb? It's waving at you. One day I'll crack that nut. It's nuts. I know. I love it. I love it. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, Silas. What about it, you two? Hey, buddy. Look at all these beautiful treasures I got. Everybody getting fleeced up in here. And I got you a bugle. Oh. Wow. Look at that. Good grief. Hey. You gave him what? Sal, you should probably clean that thing before you start using it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to need a little practice on it. Size words is racket enough, but give him a bugle. That's a sound that is offensive to all ears. I'm gonna play a 10 for you. Now, I think he actually likes it. 
the dogs are going to howl and the women are going to scream. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of it, boys. It's called torture. <laughs> Good grief. Well, that's what he needs. Give Cy a noisemaker. I smell flashback. Really? Phil's putting the side. Ding a ling a ling a ling. Cy! Cy! You can. Cy! This is a Great bugle. I think I'll give the little lammy to Jan tomorrow for her birthday. It really is. Do what? Oh, it works for me. Maybe you could give it to her tomorrow. Miss Kay, how long have you been doing with me now? A lot of years. By now, you should understand I don't do birthday parties. Well, that's silly, because... The years come and the years go. May she have a long life on the earth. Tell her I said that. No, I can tell her when you see her. Do your magic, Kay, whatever it takes. Get me out of the birthday party. I can get you out of that birthday party. Be. For a price. If you never, ever, ever, ever talk about my hoarding ever again. We'll call it a deal. You better get that in writing and cake. Okay? That's a good point, oh. sir. Hey, contract, and I'll draw it up. Oh, yeah, that'll make it legal. The Honorable Sal Robertson. <laughs> Now, Luke, I need you at the finish line with a camera. All the way down there? Yeah. What are you, out of shape? It's hot. Well, when I was your age, hey, I'd run a quarter of a mile just oh, on my I way to three more miles. That's a lie. Have you ever beat me in any kind of race? The race of life? <laughs> I'm ahead. You're fixed to go down. Chase, it's not a race. It's a math problem. That you're going to lose. Let's yeah. do this. Let's do this. Actually, let's start the video right here. I'm going to give a message to your teacher. Math is not the most exciting subject in the world, but I have to say, I'm looking forward to this experiment. All right, you ready? OK, hey. What's your teacher's name? Smith. Uh, hey, Miss Smith. Miss Smith? If Sadie's teacher wants her to show her work, that's exactly what she's going to do. We're going to do this problem by video. Uh, shut up. Seriously. When she gets all that extra credit after this assignment, she can thank Dad. I think it's really outside the box. If it were me, I'd probably give extra credit. Say you're not framed up on me. <laughs> Sorry. So, all right, this girl is going the extra mile for her homework. Here, put it on me. It's Don't actually. Put, uh -uh. This was my idea. So, just wanted to state that for the record. Amy Smith. Plus, this is another great life lesson in buttering up your teacher. Gentlemen, start your engines. They're already started, you idiot. OK, we'll skip that part. Start the race. I thought you said it wasn't a race. I mean, start the math problem. See, that's what I'm saying. Just say go, Jeff. Willie keeps pretending that this is a math problem. Everyone knows that this is a race. He has a 20-second head start. Then you go. And then I catch him. I run him down. I know it's a race. Sadie knows it's a race. Miss Smith knows it's a race. You go 30 miles per hour. I'm going to run him down like a wildebeest. Y'all can do whatever. But even if this was a math problem, I would still win. I'm the hunter. I'm going to hunt him down. Hunting nobody. huh? oh Nobody's gosh. hunting nobody. Nobody's hunting nobody. How does he know that it's 20 seconds? I'm counting in my head. Dad, you're the one with the 20 second head start, so you don't have to know. All right, that makes sense. And then you tell me when to go. On your mark. I got to hold on. Martin. What's up, dude? How's my yeah. Hold on, I'm talking to Martin. Hang up. All right, let's go. Yeah, get yeah. off the phone. This is the worst race I have ever been affiliated with. It's not a race. We're not racing. Just Nobody's saying. racing. Terrible. Because my wife got me out of a birthday event, I will never, ever complain, gripe, or fuss about her junk. Slash treasures. Slash treasures. Treasures. Hey, right, look, I've got a, you know, iron con, iron, ironclad contract here. We got to have witnesses. I agree. And it's no wonder. I've learned from the best. So we'll have one, Mr. Silas, 
Robertson as one witness. Judge Judy, Judge Joe Brown. What about Bobo as another? And we could put his paw in ink. I don't know about that. All kinds of judges. It's literally millions of them. And look, and I've watched each and every one of them like a hawk. As your legal counsel, I recommend you not use dogs as your witnesses. But I love them. It's your contract. And the one thing they all got in common, get everything in writing. I left out 2014, okay. Somebody wants to borrow my screwdriver, hey, sign the dotted line. You don't want to use my toilet? Hey, I need you to sign a release. Look, I learned that one the hard way. I might need to make a clause that excludes my birthday. Oh, you actually want him to come to your birthday? Yeah. We'll put in a birthday clause for you, but that will be what we call the fine print. All right, go on after him. Hey, 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 you gotta sign your name over here, buddy. Do what? You know, the contract. The contract. You know? You agreed to. So I've been working on it for hours. Yep. That's it. Are y'all still on that crap? Hey, this is a legal document. All we need is your John Hancock on the dotted line down here. Hey, it's a legal document. The first thing that comes to mind when the word lawyer comes up, they're like a like a bad disease, and there is no cure. I don't go to the birthday party, right? You don't go That's to the birthday correct, party. Sir. But I miss one birthday party if if. I never mention hoarding again. Once we get it notarized, it'll be illegal. This document. is going to be notarized? Yeah. yeah, by Mountain Man. Show me where to sign. I'm going fishing. OK. Well, bye. Nah. Yeah. That's right, bye. Let's go get Bobo and JJ's signature, All right. OK? Hey, they need to be on it. You got him legally now. Ready? Yeah. Ready? We are ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Yes. Let's get it on. On your Is mark. Is that the start? No. That wasn't the start. You just did your stupid hand. We gonna do this? You ready? I'll have to admit, it's hard to line up two vehicles in an open stretch of road and not have it turn into a truck race. 15 miles an hour. That's what you're supposed I to do. I know what I'm doing. I got what I'm doing. You All do right, what you ahead. do. But we're here today in the name of math and Sadie's extra credit. So I'm going to keep this as precise and mathematical as I can. Jeff, you going to count us down, or are you going to stand there and sweat through that shirt? All right. All right. On your mark. Get set. Get her done. One, two, three, four, five. It's cake, six. boys. What started out as a math problem went just about the way that I figured. 18. 19, be you go. 30, 30, going 30. This is a lot more boring than I thought it would be. It's so dang hot. That's faster than 30, son. You can't go that fast. You speeding up, I'm speeding up. He might have said, math problem. He's accelerating. He's accelerating. But his lead foot was saying something else. You can't accelerate. You're not going 30. Come on, hey, come on, You're baby. Not come going on. 30. <laughs> Cheater! I might have gone a tad over 30 miles an hour, but one thing is for sure, I won the race. Or math problem. Woo! What are you doing, you stupid idiot? What am I doing? You sped up! Yeah, yeah. I sped up. You ain't high five or nothing. You sped up. I won! He won, fair and square. It wasn't about who won or lost. It was about who got there first. I got it on video, and he just he got it on video. won. There's no way you were going 30 miles an hour. <laughs> I was going a little bit north. Well, then the whole thing's out. It doesn't count. None of that counts. Tell the truth. You saw me coming. You knew you were going to lose. You panicked, and you sped up. Chase, my truck is faster than your truck, all right? I'm faster than your truck, and I'll prove it. What? I could outrun your truck. Outrun it in what? with these puppies right here. <laughs> a man can outrun a vehicle up to 30 feet. It is a scientific fact that a person in decent shape can outrun a vehicle for 30 feet. I don't know about that. You don't know about it. I don't think it's physically possible. It's also a fact that I'm gonna beat Willie 
twice in one day. But this big old truck with him in it, he's got a weight distribution problem. Embarrassment awaits, courtesy of your brother Jace. 30 feet, one hundred. You can make it a thousand. No, that's hundred's fine. Hey, you're on. You got it? Mm. Well, are you ready? Sure, go ahead and have a seat there. Mm. Mountain Man's the best known republic I know. Hey, I could probably get my no republic stamp before he finds his. Mm. No, it ain't there. Come think of it, though, he's the only no republic I know. Y'all don't see a stamp out there, do you? Look, by the time Mountain Man finds the stamp, all right, I think the statute of limitation are expired. Got it. Right here. Great, let's do this, Mountain Man. Whoa. Where's Phil? What do you mean? By law, all parties got to be here. I'm sorry. I'm the other half of Phil, you know. Hey, here's what we're going to do, Mountain Man. We're going to go and find Phil, and then you can put that stamp on that contract. For an extra $5, I'll do it. Let's go. I'm right behind you. Mountain Man, today. Won't take long at all. What are you hey, doing? Hey, look, I need you over here for official government business. No, I don't fool with the government. We can't make this legal if you're not here for the notary deal. Hey, Phil. How you been? Well, this caper just tends to keep wandering further and further down the rabbit hole. All right, man, man, let's get the show on the road. Well, wait a minute, I ain't read it yet. So we're gonna suffer through the reading of the whole thing there, Si? First, Miss K takes on Si as legal counsel. I'll read it real quick. Yep. And then you find out that the legal counsel team is headed up by Mountain Man. Good night. Because my wife got me out of a birthday event. Still beats a birthday party. I will never complain again. Balloons, you know. Bow. No, sir. All right, let's knock it out. Cupcakes. I don't think so. Well, I'm talking about one. Don Dale. Miss K, so you're happy, happy, happy? I'm very happy. And guess what? This is going to make you feel good. I'm going to keep this forever and ever. In fact, I think I need to get a new frame for it. Are you going to say anything about that? Uh, nope. <laughs> Case dismissed. Y'all ready? Yeah. Hold on. Hamstrings. Check. Growing. Check. Stupidity. Check. Well, you're going down. You are Jace Robertson. You're fast. You're pure velocity. Let's go. Hold on. You have an insatiable desire for victory. Uh, finish stretching, son. Prepare for annihilation. Get in the position. I'm melting, dude. Tito, no way, you're a panther. No, a wild stallion being chased by a panther. Wow, yeah. All right, you ready? Let's go. Ready, set, go! You're ready. You were born ready. You're Jace. Jace. Jace, you are Jace Robertson. <laughs> you cheated! <laughs> yeah, that wasn't even close. <laughs> Woo! I'm not trying to brag here. I am bragging. It was not even a race! This was an embarrassing victory. Boom! Ah. 
It was like Willie was in slow motion. Heck no. That one? Oh, you started early. It's over. You lost. He said, ready, set, no, I'll lean Then back. you started running. No, no you were Look already running. All I want to know is where's my $100? Let me get it. Do you ever get the answer to the math problem? No, not really. I'll just work it out later. Thank you. That's about. Father, we do thank you for this meal that you provided for us. We're here on this earth, and we do thank you for this food. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. As a family, us Robertsons are always there for each other. So when one of us is in need, we never hesitate to help out. Sure, we have our own unique way of doing things, like a math problem that turned into a day of racing, or cheating in Jason's case. Or even worse, you might receive legal counsel from Cy. Si. But despite our flaws, we never fail to help each other to the best of our abilities, unless maybe a bugle's involved. Hey, Willie, how did it feel to lose today? Not nearly as bad as listening to Cy. Si. Hey, I'm a regular Louis Armstrong, boys. Coming back on. All right. This is all right here. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Music stop. Hey there, West Monroe. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mountain Man Show. I'm going to be here with you for a little while. <laughs> Here's a guy who gets paid to talk slow. His name is Mountain Man. This is an outdoor show. It's more like a stand-up comedy routine. Hey, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Mountain Man got a great show. I think some rain's coming in my knees swelling. He's forecasting Ain't weather by no his knee. Hey, your knee hurts? Okay, it's fixing the rain. Turn blue? Hey, it means cold outside. Get back inside, Jack. Oh, there you go. We're Listen. gonna have a real expert, Willie Robertson. When did Willie be become an expert? Show. Willie ain't an expert at nothing except being a party pooper. He's pooped more parties than any man I know. They got Willie the expert? Why not let me tag along, too? Sir, si, there's no way Willie's gonna let you go on there with him. Hey, I'm just gonna get in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. You can't spell radio without SI. Can I buy an S? The... Excuse me. <laughs> if it comes up again, we'll vote on it. You got those burn hedges? Grant said he gave you the order. I am in the process of making the bird hedges. <laughs> <laughs> Chase, I ain't got time for this crap. Mr. Robertson, being an expert in the outdoors, what do you think's the most dangerous game on the planet? Oh, I get it. <laughs> anything? <laughs> yeah. Anything? Anything? I'm doing a radio show, so what? Willie thinks this is some kind of spotlight, so he can show off his vast knowledge of the outdoors. People listen to that to laugh. Nobody's listening to it to hear some talk on the outdoors. Well, now they will. This is not an outdoor show. It's a comedy. Hey, I'm gonna go with you. Good idea, right there. Hey, Tonto, I don't need a sidekick. Hey, I used to be a radio man enough. What station were you on? Hey, I was on WNAM. WNAM? It seems that as size has gotten older, his whole war experience has grown right along with him. By the time he dies, he's going to have fought the whole thing single-handedly. You just made that up. I didn't make that up. That was the radio station. What the W stand for? Hey, we for? had a war going on in Nam. So, hey, we named it W Nam. <laughs> <laughs> I got to draw you boys a picture on everything. Do you remember the movie? Uh, Good morning, Vietnam. Hey, I was a good afternoon, Vietnam. It was probably my deal that made him famous, okay? He's riding on my back. 
Fine, you can go with me. All right. Mm, this is gonna be good. Don't touch anything, don't say anything. You're not going on the radio. You'll never know I'm there. I think it's a good idea. That's a terrible idea. This would be the most anticipated radio show ever. All right, get the calls made, all right? <laughs> Everybody's fired up about the Olympics. They need to have a redneck Olympics. Look at there. See, Galwin could enter the contest for wheelbarrowing. Yeah. That's good. I'm not too excited about doing yard work, but my wife is putting the pressure on me to spruce up our yard. You gonna put this in bag? The leaves are not supposed to go in bags. God gave us the greatest instrument in the world for leaves. Fire. If I'm gonna work that hard getting leaves out of my yard, oh, I'm gonna see a show. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. One of the most exciting sounds to a redneck is. God, when I think it's gonna burn the whole neighborhood down. He put a lot of gas on it. This is really not a good idea. Chase. Hey, bud. What are you doing? I'm burning the leaves. Why, when I ask you to fix up the yard, does it always entail something burning or you destroying something? Babe, there's a pot. Jason, hey. right now, my main concern is the neighbors. Well, Last time they complained. Look, they're just driving by. Oh, hey. I know. <laughs> Look, they saw the smoke. We sent out a smoke signal. Get you a couple of hot dogs and come on, man. Chap. Hey, Please. they may want to roast a wiener. As soon as the fire starts, it's all the whispering and murmuring. You burn some leaves in the yard, and everybody's like, hey, they're burning leaves, they're burning leaves. And then here everybody comes by. They're sending out smoke signals. Chase. They're crazy. There's a bearded man starting a fire in his yard. What are we going to do? We're going to get in trouble again with the Homeowners Association if you do not put this fire out. Huh? Remember whenever you skinned the deer? I skinned one little deer off the back of his truck in the front yard. You would have thought the world was coming to an end. Right when the neighbor's school bus was dropping their kids off. Just because I'm skinning a deer in my yard and some kids come by and see it, and now all of a sudden they're having nightmares? Just because they see the carcass of a deer that I'm going to eat? Guts everywhere. They're now traumatized? They ran screaming towards their house, and yes, I got a phone call just about a half an hour later. Maybe you should skin some of your animals in front of your kids so they're not so traumatized. It's my yard. If I want to skin a deer right here, I can skin a deer okay, right here. Okay, look, I've got to go. So why don't you just go ahead and clean this stuff up before we get in trouble? Hey, by the way, you look smoking hot. A lot hotter than this fire. That helps just a little. Okay. You really look good, babe. Ooh, you lit a fire under her, Jake. <laughs> well, I'm telling you. There's nothing like a hot woman that's hot. I wish I had some weenies or marshmallows or something. You can say that again. I wish I had some weenies or marshmallows or something. You can say that again. OK. I wish I had some weenies or marshmallows or something. Keep them coming, guys. I can do it all day long. Can I help you? Yeah, we're here to see Gary with the Mountain Man Show. OK, and what's your name? Willie. Willie Robertson. OK. And his Uncle Si. OK. Me and Bells have always had a thing. Whenever I get around one, hey, something takes over. There's nothing I can do about it. Gary, I have a Willie Robertson and Si here to see you. I can't help it. Some people have feet fetishes, OK? Put it out of my way, I, you know? Hey. I got a bell fetish. Live with it. Hey, guys. I'm Gary. Hey, Gary. How you doing? Willie Robertson. Hey, Willie. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I'm at Uncle Si. Oh, <laughs> hi, Si. Let me let you in here. I told you to quit touching. Hey, stuff. I'm trying. Is that a flower bush? I think it's roses, but they're not in good shape. Woo! Got your fence supplies and a little surprise for you boys. Come on. All right. Where'd you get them chickens? Well, I'm fixing to try to add a little bit of a flavor. Jackpot to Yuppieville. I consider it a very positive improvement. Oh, I'll take them chickens. 
chickens. We'll corral them to the backyard. I'll let them free graze. Free range chicken. Come on. Well, I tell you what, what are you guys? talking about in good shape? Chickens look slow, and we know they're dumb, but chickens are quite challenging to corral. There you go. <laughs> get it, get it, get it. <laughs> Y'all don't let them outsmart you now. We're herding chickens. Keep that dog on a leash. I mean, you see a bunch of grown men chasing chickens around the subdivision. I would say America is making a comeback. I got to be honest, I'm scared to grab a hold of one. <laughs> All right, Willie, let me get you set up. You just speak right into uh, that. One, 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 one. What are you sounding like that for? I've been looking forward to this for a while. This is Willie Robertson. When I was asked to be on the show, I took it as an honor. All right, Willie, you ready to do this? All right, I'm ready. You ready? Yep. All right, let's let her rip, Tater Chip. Don't say anything. Willie, it's a radio show, and you want me to be quiet? I'd say that. We're on the air. Boring. And we're back with Willie Robertson from the Duck Commander. How you doing, my man? It's good to be here. Doing great, Willie. Good to have you on the show today. If anybody wants to call in and talk to Willie or Cy, y'all give us a call. It's just me. He's just here. Hey, Mountain Man, we got a call on line one for you. Z Country, this is the Mountain Man show. Hey, yeah, I've got a question for Willie. What was your best duck hunting season? Probably hands down, like four years hey, ago. Hey, I remember the time me and him went, and hey, we didn't kill any ducks, and he cried. That's not true. <laughs> sure it is. Hey, it's radio. It's like NASCAR or figure skating. They only watch it to see the crash. Well, he was 19 years old. That's a lie. Maybe my eyes are watered. No. You have to give the audience what they want, and look, I'm giving them what they want. We're not here to talk about me crying. I wasn't crying. There was no crying. No, there was no crying. Gee, well. You think? <laughs> the caller's still on the phone. Now he thinks you're a crybaby, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just get zinged by Mountain Man? Well, it looks like we got another caller on line two here. How can I help you today? Well, I have a question for Cy. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, do you have any other good Willie stories? Oh, yeah, no. hey, one time he got so mad he threw a shotgun in the water. I'm gonna kill him. Hey. He's telling lies to tons and uh, probably 200 people in West Monroe. You've never met a president? Yeah, I have. He gave me a medal. And he's hijacking my segment. This is my reputation that's on the line. One time we put blanks in his shotgun. What is the deal with this show? This is a dream. That's the only explanation. Diamond, is that you? Next call. <laughs> There's no way things have gotten this bad this fast in real life. This has nothing to do with the outdoors. Hey, are we gonna talk hunting or what? Did you ever get any hunting done? <laughs> <laughs> what is the deal here? It's like we got another caller here. Hey, Willie, I know uh, that's your main thing. When it's not duck season, like, what, what do you, what's your favorite hunt? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I really like going after uh, feral hogs, get your bow out. Hey, I've seen you shoot a bow for the last four or five years. You just ain't a bow man. You're crazy, dude. I'm straight up Hunger Games no. with a bow. Hey, if you go hunting with a bow, you're going to go hungry. Did you steal that? Well, that's about all the time we have for today. Y'all be sure to tune in next week for the Mountain Man Show, and see y'all then. Cy Robertson, out. You're a disgrace to radio. Missy wants the yard to look good, but all I care about it is being functional. There you go. Oh, you got shiners in that oh, thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, Look good here. night, Jay. Now you're getting somewhere. The surroundings of this house is 100% organic. Well, I love to take a dump in the woods. That's about as organic <laughs> as you can get. <laughs> well, Wipe your tail with the leaves. I went organic and green way before organic and green became vogue. See them ridges right there? That is toilet paper. You wouldn't want to squat down next to poison ivy or poison oak leaves. Although large enough to get the job done, it could cause the anal region some misery. Okay, well, here we go. Let's give them a new home. 
Oh, yeah. Jason. Oh, yeah. Hey, how'd the symphony go? Forget the symphony. Guess who I just got off the phone with? Who? The chairman of the HOA. What's the HOA? I never even heard of that. The Homeowners Association. You know, the people that we pay our annual dues to. We pay them? You are trying to tell me that there are associations that exist only to tell me what I can and can't do at my house? And then I pay you for that? Are those chickens? Yeah, Phil gave me them chickens. <laughs> no, you can, we can't do that here. That's part of the reason why they're calling us into a meeting tomorrow night. Well, you tell them I'll be there. I look forward to it. Sometimes in life, you gotta make a stand. Do I want to? No. Is it gonna be uncomfortable? Yes. Is it the right thing to do for the love of my neighborhood? Absolutely. Babe, I love you, but sometimes I feel like I'm raising four kids instead of three. Hey, John. Hey, Jeff. Here you go. I'll work that out. Rock on. Z Country, this is the Mountain Man show. Hey, I remember the time me and him went, and hey, we didn't kill any ducks, and he cried. <laughs> That's not true. That's, That's true. not true. That is. Since this show has aired, the station keeps replaying it over and over and over. One time he got so mad, he threw a shotgun in the water. <laughs> <laughs> and we keep listening every time it's on. Cy Robertson, out. You're a disgrace to radio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, you said I couldn't shoot a compound bow. I own, like, four of them. I, I know you own four of them, but that don't mean you can shoot them. How about I shoot you in the butt? Then you'll think I can shoot them. <laughs> Good luck. I ain't got no butt, Jack. I think that's the truth. <laughs> Let's go to the archery range and settle this. Archery range? Great idea. Follow me. Let's settle this like You didn't me. know about that. Hey, they got an archery range. Hey, we got a conflict. Let's solve it. That's what I'm talking about. There's an archery range in the warehouse. That's right. Pretty impressive, huh? All right, here's what we're gonna do. Yes, you can't put an archery range in the back of a warehouse. Forget all that. What if you shoot somebody? There's your equipment. That's my bow. Yeah, we borrowed it. Look, if you hit the target, then Cy, his radio career is finished. Hey, we'll just disagree to uh, disagree. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I disagree to disagree with what he just said. Well, wait a minute now. Hey, if Willie misses the target, Hey, I'm gonna get on the show and tell more stories. He can even make some up if That's he right. wants. Hey, I can't wait to see what the big crybaby's gonna do when he misses this target. He'll be crying for his mama, boys. Willie, take your mark. Boo hoo hoo. Boo hoo hoo. <laughs> Boo hoo hoo. Big crocodile tears. <laughs> <laughs> Hammered him. Hammered him. Bullseye. Jack. So he can shoot a bow. Hey, it still doesn't change the fact he cried like a big baby. And that is a fact, Jack. You're out of the radio business. Hey, look here. We never shook on it, so it doesn't matter. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> See? Well, y'all are going to put up this archery range. This ain't happening in here. Yeah, y'all put up the archery range. I'm going to my own deal. <laughs> Good shooting, Willie. Yeah. Hey, got to make some duck calls. I'm docking all your pay. Look at all these minivans. It's embarrassing. Babe, these are our neighbors. We want to get along with them. We want to be happy. Yeah, this ought to be exciting. Yuppie Central. We'll discuss that and see what we want How to do with that. Doing? I'm Jace. This is my wife, Missy. Hey. My parents, Phil and Kay. I brought a casserole. That's great. So. Well, Mr. Robertson, uh, I'm glad you're here. I mean, we'll we're talking about life. when you think about it, it's just burning leaves. And we got Mr. three chickens. Yeah, Mr. Robertson, we'll, right. we'll deal with that at the end of the right, day. Thank fine. you. Thank you. These people look like zombies. It looks like aliens have come down and taken away their soul. Because they're not moving a muscle. They're just stiff. They're just. 
10 o'clock, we need to have the lights really on. Really not a good idea to have yard sales in the neighborhood. Just instead of turkey this year, we can get chicken. Uh, we have Thanksgiving coming we up. We need to get our decorations up. What's wrong with you? Does anyone have anything they'd like to bring up at this point? Mr. Robertson, if you'd like to, this is all a good right. time for you to, uh, actually, you could just make those comments from back there if you'd like. That's all right. We are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. Amen. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's right. Chickens make me happy. They get insects, they fertilize your yard, and if anything goes wrong, you can put them in a pot. I brought a casserole. If I had to live in a neighborhood where I couldn't have at least the right to be free, I mean, that makes me want to move to Scotland or China. Amen. Flush these rules down the commode and let's be creative and put the... Uh. So I just, I mean, I'm trying to tear down some walls here. Be as it may, Mr. Robertson, uh, when you bought your house, you signed this document that said you're not allowed to burn in your yard and you cannot have chickens. They got me. All right. I signed the contract. I didn't know that was in there. We're out of here. I'm going to take that casserole with me. Sorry. Sorry. Thank y'all. Here's the moral of the story. Get that casserole and let's get out of here. What is the moral of the story? Father, thank you for this day. I do pray, Father, that uh, we not be bitter about our neighbors. So we'd appreciate you help us in that area. Through Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 You can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. And you know who I'm talking about. Hey, let me tell you about the time Willie went down the river. Hey, 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 uh-uh. Oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. To the same point, you can't choose your neighbors either. It's all a lesson in tolerance, because you sure ain't gonna win them all. And today was a perfect example of that. Yet even on the worst days, I wouldn't trade my family for any other family in the world. Let me tell y'all about the time Stop. Willie. I'm gonna shoot you in the butt with that bow, son. Hey, anybody can have one lucky shot. <laughs> <laughs>